ladies, gentlemen, children boys of all and ages. Girls. Yes, boys and girls indeed. We got StarCraft action for you. Is that what you're after? I think it is. Yeah, it is. And it's a PvP and it's group number two. Socke versus Grubby. This is going to be good. Dude, this yeah. is very, very, very good. And the first map is going to be on Shakur's Plateau. And PvP in itself has been a lot of fun recently. Um, it's all changing around now. Evolutions, um, yeah, very much yeah, so. Yeah, it is. And it's a lot about the later stages of, of the game now. So compared to the old 4Gate versus 4Gate every single game. So. And Definitely. And these two guys, Socke versus Grubby, have not played against each other that much. Nope. Uh, and when they did play, it was just a 2-1 win to Grubby on an online semi-final, nothing mm -hmm. big. Yep. They, they haven't played anything big like this tournament. Um, so this is going to be a good test for both of these players. And both of them have very, very good PvPs. Um, Sake, through the EPS, through all the European tournaments, and especially in Germany, always plays Hazuobs. So mm -hmm. he's got a lot of PvP practice. Yep. And Grubby is just naturally good at PvP. Naturally good at everything. He's so he's good at everything. Yeah. I mean, his control, his decision making, the attributes that kind of come into PvP to make you a good player. Grubby has every one of them with yep. flying colors. Yeah, he does. He's so scary right so, now. Uh, yeah. He's got so good so fast. When he switched over, people had high expectations and they didn't really fulfill them because, yeah. hey, he was not really doing things the way that he should yeah. be in StarCraft 2. And then he's coming leaps and bounds. People were very impressed by not only his play in Home Story Cup, but also his commentary. Yeah. yeah. I remember when these guys actually first played ever was at a tournament, I don't know, maybe Gamescom. Um, when Grubby was still playing for EG, he was still Warcraft free playing. He played a show match against Sake Zerg, yeah. um, and there was a bunch of people watching. And Grubby actually won it back then as well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, obviously Sake playing his off race, but these guys now are playing it for real. An important match, of course. First game of the group stage. First game for both of these players as well. They have to win. It's almost. I mean, if you look at every other tournament and every other history of the game, the the person that wins the first group game usually does well for the rest of the tournament. Yeah. So this is obviously going to be very important for both of these guys. Are you ready, Total Biscuit? Oh, I'm always ready. We're just waiting. Ten, uh, Grubby requires 10 seconds. All right. Specifically. Nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, five, five four. four. Oh, crap, it's Sake. Ah. Sake could require 10 minutes. Okay, Sake's okay. So okay. Grubby's time must be out now. Sake's awake. And so is Grubby. Let's go. Here we go. Countdown has now begun. Sake, very laid back player. Very yes. laid back. Also likes his prep time. Very much so. Oh, I saw it at the Home Story Cup on the camera. It's so funny. He beats somebody. I think he beat Thorzane. And then he gets up and leaves for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Thorzane's like, Who? I want to play. Yeah, that's that's Sokke. Sokke. Like, no, no, that's Sokke no, no. in a nutshell. He'll probably do it here too. Uh, Sokke re kind of pretty much requires that. I don't know why that is, but he's done the same thing every SCI as well. And the fact of the matter is he's won two SCIs in a row. So mm. I'm not going to argue with his methods, quite frankly. So, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger to our double grand champion of mm. SCI. He's Can't won forget that. SCI 2 and SCI 3. But this is the guy looking to knock him off his Protoss pedestal in this particular group. He's perhaps one of the most famous Warcraft 3 players there is and is now looking to do exactly the same thing in StarCraft 2. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you... Team Grubby. Uh, Grubby. <laughs> and he is in the red trunks and playing Protoss to the southeast. I'm sorry, there's no way to say that without sounding weird. That's funny. Versus his opponent, as I said, the double grand champion of SCI, the triple grand champion of EPS, I might add, looking to take a double hat trick. This is just insanity, the very idea that somebody can do that. Yeah. But, well, there is one man for the job, and he goes by the name of... Alternate Attack Sake. He is in the baby blue trunks uh, to the southwest of this particular map playing Protoss. And Sake playing very safe, checking everyone in his base for any proxy gateways. Really, really early on. So that's interesting to see that. Especially as a two-time champion of this tournament, that he's been so safe to protect his title. Overall in PvP, there isn't a one strategy to rule them all, per se. Mm -hmm. um, there's one strategy which is used more than often, which is Observer Blink. But that's because it offers the most flexibility in the matchup. But there's not a really strong strategy that beats everything. So it comes down to a lot of mind games. A lot of what do you think your opponent is doing or what do you think your opponent is going to do. Mm. So we'll have to see who comes on top in these little mind game wars and hopefully uh, be able to explain them as they unravel throughout this game. And I'm sure there'll be a lot. 
I don't think there's any doubt about that, is that there has to be. And PvP is very much mind games in the same way that ZBZ can be as well. But mm. PvP, I think people have got this opinion that PvP is just a little bit more refined at the moment mm. in terms of how it plays out. And it's less of, a, again, it's the perception of the coin flip. It's not actually a coin flip, but the perception of the coin flip with PvP has disappeared. And we see Grubby go 12 gateway to Chrono Boost, grabs the second guess immediately. Socket actually built a Zealot to begin with. Mm -hmm. And this is more of a defensive mana to grab his second gas. But knowing that Grubby's already got his second gas, there's no four gate gonna happen here. There's nothing funky aggressive gonna happen here. He actually decides, all right, well, I'm gonna skip that Zealot and get my gas even faster, just like you are. Yep. So already mind games going on now. And we see Grubby going through a three stalker rush now. Um, he, well, may, may or may not, he still has Chrono Boost. He's not really Chrono Boost in the gateways because he has seen that he doesn't need to rush to get them out. Yep. So he still may go three stalkers, but not rushing them out, mm -hmm. per se. And this, so far, the board is open for Socket. He can tech up right now. Uh, he can also add a Sentry right now. But he has a second Stalker. So already lots of small, minute details in this game already. Yep, and you will no doubt get great joy from analyzing every single last one of them. Yeah, man. That's the way. That is indeed the way. I personally will be looking for the lasers, of which we will <laughs> see quite a few of. And then double Chrono Boost into both gateways now. So he is going to rush those uh, extra two Stalkers out. Yep. And what is Sucker doing? Throwing down second and third gateway. And he's got a lot of gas bind up right now. He's playing pretty safe. Um, I mean, Stargate goes down for Grubby. All right, so Grubby's deciding to go for a Stargate. Funky. And the uh, kind of the the, re the the build that works well when you go Stargate is if he goes Robotics Facility. And then you can use Phoenixes, you can pick up Sentries, you can pick up Probes, and he's going to be running around with an Observer and an Immortal maybe that might not do anything if he goes for the Robotics Facility. He may actually just expand, but with the amount of gas he's saved up from two gases, he has to tech, which is a Twilight Council. So already Grubby at a bit of a disadvantage now, because Sake's already preparing for Stargate play, because he's already got the Twilight Council yeah, without exactly. even knowing about it. Yeah, Blink Stalker will put him in a fantastic position. Sokke's micro versus Grubby's micro. Grubby's got some fairly legendary micro, but bear in mind that that doesn't always translate over. Mm. You can't just say, oh, it's great Warcraft 3 play, you just have amazing Starcraft 2 micro, mm. right? No, not, not necessarily. But Grubby does actually genuinely have great micro. It could be DTs still. It could. And if it's DTs, that's like a hard counter to Stargate. But Grubby does have a robotics facility coming down now, it's obviously going to help out. But I don't think he'll go DTs. Going DTs is a big gamble, and there's already action going on in the middle. One stalker goes down, and that is already huge because what does Grubby have? A Phoenix! There's not, really nothing! Phoenix is not good against Stalker, especially not six of them, and he's going to try and head his way Ooh, up the ramp. That's. Premature force yeah. field. Premature for saculation is <laughs> and what that is. We do have the blink going down. We also have the robotics facility going down. So it is going to be blink obs, but against what Grubby's done, that's very, very good right now. Um, Phoenix is overall, I've been playing with them a lot recently. They are so useful and they're so efficient if you can get them up and keep them alive mm -hmm. because they just keep picking up things forever and ever and ever because the energy regenerates. Yep. Um, but if Sake picks them off, it's you know wasted money for sure. And in come the Phoenixes, and Sake already knows about it now. Yep, he is getting out of there as rapidly as possible, and he's able to take out a probe. But again, what is he really going to be able to do? He's going to continue to build Phoenixes. He's got three of it. Phoenix is built very, very fast, so it's always nice. And as you said, that they can definitely pay for themselves many times over if you can keep them alive and if you can actually do mm. the damage with them. So Sake just has to defend his mineral line right now and expand at the same time because Phoenixes can't pick up Nexuses. <laughs> no, um, no, they cannot. But and, and he can defend his mineral line very well, which means the Phoenixes are not going to be able to do any economic damage to Sake. I means he's obviously going to be ahead in the mid game. The problem is, though, if he doesn't pick up probes, he naturally builds up energy on the Phoenixes, which can now start to lift up, for example, Blink Stalkers and Immortals in the fight or whatever, since we do have a robotics facility down for Sake now. But Sake is going to go ahead and not get any information. <gasps> the observers are going to pass, but no, he doesn't see. That was really close for Grubby because if he'd prevented that observer going, Sake wouldn't have known if he'd expanded, if he was on one base or not. So that's very, very important for Sake right now. And he's going to be feeling very happy uh, that there's no expansion right now. And he's going to be like, all right, well, all I need to do is defend against this. Probably a push coming. Yeah, and he shouldn't really have too much of a problem doing that, honestly. He's got enough Stalkers. He's got Blink, of course, which is going to be a huge, huge help. Those Phoenixes are going to do mm. precisely jack, considering what's yeah. in here. He's got a Forge now. He can build. He can get plus one. It, well, probably not, though, because he doesn't really have that much gas. But he can definitely build a cannon yep. to protect that natural, because he knows he has to defend it from Grubby's push. Um, on the other hand, there are two Force Fields available for Sake, 
Grubby's going to want to focus on picking up the sentry so he can't force field the ramp. And because Grubby has a large army right now, but the Immortals, maybe it'll be worth, I don't know, the Immortals, it's going to be hard to target fire the Immortals down because there's quite a few Zealots and more coming if Grubby warps in. But Grubby doesn't have an aggressive pylon, so I guess it isn't as dangerous as it looks. Until yeah, he builds one. Well, uh, he's actually going to shut down the robotics facility right here because that's in the corner, and it's also going to supply block Sokke, mm. and he wasn't prepared for that, and it's going to take him a wee while to get another pylon up. So oh, he's going to miss a round of warp ins. And there's the pylon, and, and actually Sokke sees the pylon too, and he has two uh, two cannons at the front now. Immortal's obviously going to do well against that. Um, oh, ooh, ooh. Lose, yes. Sokke loses vision. That's not so good. But if Sokka can needs cut to be, it in well, half... Grubby just... Uh, oh, that wasn't so good. And a quick blink in right there. And he knew exactly what he was going to do. Yeah. But he takes one sentry and loses two phoenixes as a result. And the observer. And Grubby sees the cannons too. And he's like, uh... Now he's going to have to try to do something else. So he's on the robotics uh, bay. And he's going to tech up to Colossus soon. But Grubby... I mean, Grubby's so far behind. Sokka's so far ahead. Even if Grubby chrono boosts into the Nexus, which he is right now, Sokka can do the same. <laughs> Yes, he can. He's got plus one coming as well. And natural build order. You can see the difference between going Stargate and going Blink. The person that plays Blink has naturally got a better advantage going into yep. the game. Well, that is a dead robotics facility by the looks of That's it. That's helpful. Uh, yeah, it is, because that stops the war prism, and of course, rebuilding that is an absolute pain. He even gets out there without any losses. So yeah. it turns out that's a bad place to put your robo. It slows his tech down a lot, so what we can see now... Yeah, exactly, just go Templar Archives. You don't want to go robotics facility, then robotics bay, and try yeah. to climb back up. You've already got Zealot Charge Switch coming, tech, just yeah. go Templar Archive, you can go Zealot Archon now. And with Zealot Archon, you want to be exploiting the fact that Grubby can't attack you until he has a very strong amount of Colossus to obviously deal with the Zealots and so on. Yeah. And he has to fight in small areas. So we may even see Sokke be like, alright, well, cool, I'm going to go Zealot Archon and just take a third base. Because Grubby can't come to me right now. Um, so that's what I expect to happen soon. But Grubby is trying to focus on getting a nice, beefy Colossus army up, but that's going to take a while. Yes, it will, and it's already only, he hasn't even got one out yet, and yeah. needs to, of course, work an extended thermal lancer. I wouldn't expect anything coming out of Grubby for the next couple of minutes, certainly he doesn't really have any harassment potential either. This single Phoenix is taking a pounding, it's only got 10 HP left, so it's really just keeping an eye on things as opposed to anything else. Got the aggressive piling remains over there, hasn't been scouted out just yet by Sokke, so he could potentially start pushing mm -hmm. in from there, but yeah, this Zealot Archon is very likely to be the case and four more gateways being added on for Sokke just what to make is, that even more crazy. What is Sokke doing? I mean he's not really focused on pro production he's just chrono boosting gateways. Is he gonna try and go for this attack? He might before bef I think he is, before man. the Colossus come out most likely he wants to strike before. It's interesting he can use the Archon to smash down force fields of Grubbies to try to hold him off so hmm. Well, they can bring another Archon, he's warping in two more High Templars, so... He may be trying to do this right now with 1-1 one, one upgrades maybe as well. Oh, Grubby moving out though, I'm not so happy about this decision though. Because if he gets caught, Zealot Archons are just oh, it's so good in open area. Yeah, it really, really is. And those Immortals are going to be basically useless against that kind of composition. Grubby's been slightly supply blocked there for a while and needs to sort that out. Sokke with a very slight army advantage, I believe. But yeah, the, the Colossus count is going to be a two. Extended Thermal Lance is now done. Yeah, Gr um, Sokke's going for this, man. Yeah. He's just not even caring about the latest stages of this game. He wants to end it now. I, I don't really blame him. He's going to be against Grubby. He's not exactly an easy opponent. So he's going to go for it. And it's going to be dangerous. He's still going up against two Colossus. And the longer, of course, he fights, the more risk there is that the third Colossus pops out. And then things start to get really nasty. Yeah. Archons are going to need to be at the front to beat the Force Fields down. But really smart play. Oh my god, the double gateways! Oh, wow, look at that. There's the uh, quick blink coming in right there. But yeah, Grubby dumps down two gateways to filter Sokke's army into the hot gates. And Grubby losing the remainder of these immortals right now. Will he be able to hold on to this? Even the placement, I mean, that was great. Absolutely fantastic play, but does he even it's have enough to hold stuff. this? I think it's just too much. Yeah, more zealots coming in with charge as well. It's a very smart idea by Grubby, but just way too many units here. And upgrade advantage for Sokke gonna close up this first game the SCI 2 and 3 champion coming out with all guns firing Total Biscuit. Don't mess with Sokke man do not mess with Sokke under any circumstances there's a reason this guy took out the SCI one champion in the first round of SCI 2 he killed Nurcio is the reason he is the double champion here he is absolutely awesome. And Grubby's trying to hold on as best he can, but there's Archons in his base, Blink Stalkers, and that is the GG. And the wow. first game of this group, 
goes to Sokke in a convincing fashion. Yeah, a bit of a build order advantage, though, Definitely. unfortunately for Grubby. Yeah. I mean, going Stargate and walking into Blink is obviously oh, horrible. Yeah, absolutely. It's not as bad if your opponent goes Robo, then Blink, because mm -hmm. obviously it's a lot later delay, but when your opponent goes Twilight Cancel first, it's like a hard counter almost, so Pretty much, yeah. very, very difficult there for Grubby to kind of fight back. The Phoenixes, what do they do really? Almost nothing in that game. No. And it's expensive to go Stargate and Phoenixes. It's a good game though, still a very good game. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was a good game. I did particularly like, as you said, the two gateways put down there by Grubby yeah, to try and filter his smart. opponent. Incredibly smart play and the kind, the kind of innovation that we expect from Grubby there. But unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough. All right, so just ask Grubby what his map choice is. Add something else that Grubby did. Both of these players do like to take their time and decisions after and before a game, so. Yeah, that's good. That means we can run some more He's actually watching the replay, the actually, so yeah. Yep. He's watching the replay, so I guess we can just run a couple of Yeah, we're going to go to an ad break and perhaps a quick little bit of music, and then when we come back, it'll be game two of Grubby versus Sokke.